There's no more time, church, Thank for you, you to sit around and hope you're going to get there. There's no more time. So many Christians, like I said, you have to repent for waiting on God. He's waiting on you. Amen. And so many Christians, man, I can't wait for the move of God. They're going to wait until Jesus comes back. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but until they learn that God's already done all He's going to do. See, He's finished. Those three words, it is finished. The three most powerful words, three of them, are the most, because He's done. Now it's up to you to carry the torch. Remember we talked about it in here. It's like when we were in track in high school. You run, you hand the baton off. Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father, gave you the baton. Amen. Amen. You'll see what that actually means today. Amen? Amen. Life in Jesus Christ, it's not what you thought it was meant to be. Everybody wants to become a Christian and live on the yellow brick road. <laughs> Sorry, the streets of gold are in heaven, not here. Amen. And it's so important that you realize something. When you got born again, you didn't get grafted into just a, a, another kingdom and a citizen of heaven. You got drafted into the military. Amen. I had a family of military people. I was never in there, but I, I found out what being in the military is when I became a Christian. I found out laying your life down, what sacrifice means, giving up your hopes and dreams to fulfill the dreams and hopes that God has for you. It's not about what I desire in this world. It's about what He wrote out before the world began for us to complete here on this earth. God needs all of you to finish your destiny and stop waiting for somebody else to do what God's called you to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Just share the love today. <laughs> <laughs> the word meaning. Say the dictionary is a good book. Should have read it more as a kid. I wouldn't have to read it so much now. Ah, uh, the meaning of life. What is that word meaning? It's what is meant. What is meant to be? What is intended to be? Or in fact is indicated, referred to, or understood. That has meaning or significance. Expressive. See, our lives should be an expression of the life of Jesus Christ. People don't need to know you. They need to know Jesus. Amen. Amen. He saves. He heals. He protects. He provides. He raises the dead. And He does it through willing vessels that are willing to put their own life on the shelf and know that they're a brand new life right now. Amen. That word, and meaningful. It means a life full of meaning, having significance or purpose. How many Christians run around that I talk to on the phone every week, I want to know God's will and my purpose. Have you ever read the book? <laughs> See, it's amazing how many ask God questions, but they never got to know Him because they never read His letter to us. Amen. See, this is, your, this is God's will for you. It's in here from Genesis to Revelation. He doesn't misspeak. This is the infallible Word of God. His perfect will for every child of God is in these Scriptures. Like when we open today, God's faith towards you and what He's going to do for you is according to your faith what you believe Him for. Because God can never not be faithful. Amen. That's why your expectation has to be in God and not in man. If you got hope in people doing anything right, God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> people that put hope in people, you know what they do? They're always down. They're always discouraged. They're always broken hearted. Because you put your hope in the wrong person. Yes. He's faithful. He can't not be. See, I pray for everybody, but my hope is in Christ alone. That's it. It ends there. I don't have hope past that. I told you, even in my marriage to my wife, 18 years, blessed marriage, awesome marriage, awesome woman of God. But you know whose hope I have in to keep it that way? Him. Amen. Amen. So many Christian marriages don't work out because they put their hope in each other for satisfaction instead of the only one that can satisfy your soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop looking for joy in this world. That's why the joy of the Lord is not our strength. Get your joy from Him. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. You already got it in here. Yes. Stop Amen. looking for people to make you happy. You're not here to be happy. You're here to serve. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting off the message. <laughs> well, I already did. <laughs> I, I warned you when I started. I'm just a spokesman. <laughs> Colossians, third chapter. 
to find the meaning of life, you can't be looking to you for it. See, when I was raised, you get up, I knew I was going to work hard my whole life, I was going to drink hard, fight hard, live hard. Live, that's, that's the way you were raised in an Irish Catholic household, okay? You grew up drinking beer and fighting. That's what you grew up drinking. I mean, it was just every day. I mean, you know what's scary? It was a way of life. It was So God had to graft me into a new vine to get rid of my human lineage to give me a godly lineage. Amen. So that that person died. Amen. But you're going to see something in this scripture that so jumped out at me this week studying for this because it's so important until you lose yourself in Christ. He can't do with you what He wants to do. Amen. Right. Amen. Colossians 3. If you then were raised with Christ, seek those things that are above, 1 through 3 in Colossians 3, where Christ is what? Sitting. We just did a whole Bible study. You're seated with Him at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Where is it? Hidden. You're not supposed to be here anymore. God can't live through you when it's about you. That's right. That's right. He doesn't share that with anybody. Mm. Hidden means it's no longer you who's doing the living. Oh. Oh, I, I, feel, I feel a tightness here. <laughs> in Colossians 1.13, it says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness, conveyed us into the kingdom of what? The Son of His love. Galatians 2.20, You've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer you who live, but He who lives in you. See, the meaning of life is that you die. That's right. Amen. 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 I'm getting a few amens. So that He can live. Now this started, he wrote it out before the foundation of the world. So many Christians want to, I heard a song the other day, God's still writing out your story. No, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. It's already written. Psalm 139, That's verse right. 16. That's right. It's written in the book of life in heaven. I heard that in the song. I'm going, is the dude saved? <laughs> God is not writing out my life anymore. Amen. It is written. It's up for me to follow the blueprint. That's right. Amen. See, I can't make my own plans or He's not my Lord. He's my Savior. Amen. 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 This is all about you not living anymore, about Him living in you today. Mm. We want to change the world. Like I said, it took so many years of us praying every Friday night to see that place closed. The only greatest disappointment, it's great the building's gone now. My wife and I poured oil on the ground to purify it, repented of all the sins that were committed on that corner. But guess what? None of those women got in here to get saved. One was saved. That was the only sad part. Because we'd see them in the gas station once in a while. Hey, why don't you come on over? Well, I can't go in there. Yeah, you can. One girl said, Paul, oh, the roof will fall in. I said, it didn't fall in when I got saved. It sure won't leave you. Amen. Because I was worse, so don't go there. Amen. Uh, Amen. Your sin's no different than the rest of us. Amen? Amen. Maybe a different kind, but it was still sending them to hell. Right. It's, it's God doesn't, sin is sin. He doesn't agree with it. He forgives it and He washes it with His blood. Amen? Amen. So know that your life, until you allow it to be hidden in Christ, so you don't want any credit, so you don't want any praise, so that you don't want any glory. Amen. Yeah, how about that? See, we, we, our attaboys come from God. God gives me a hug when He's happy with me. Amen. And then He pinches me a few times when I'm not going in the right direction. So, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Besides, Kim, we're a work in progress. Amen. Amen. You got to have a role model. Got to have a role model. But you see what I'm saying? Think about it. Think about what those scriptures tell us. You got grafted into another kingdom. Yes. Amen. Your citizenship paperwork changed. It doesn't say anymore where I was born. It says I'm a citizen of heaven. It doesn't say the USA. 
doesn't say Russia. That's it doesn't right. say any other That's country right. on the planet. Amen. I'm a citizen of heaven. My name is not in these books here. It's in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Okay, so I'm a whole new being now. What happened when you got raised from the tomb with Jesus? What happened to you? You became saved. You became forgiven. You became a new creation. You became redeemed, sanctified, justified, purified, made worthy to be a child of God yes. by the blood of Jesus. God. You became all those yes. things. Yes. But you won't stay hidden in that until you see yourself as a purified, made worthy saint of God in Christ. No longer a sinner. If you still have a sin consciousness, you don't know the power of Jesus' blood. Amen. Amen. You don't know that you're clothed in righteousness and robes of salvation. You don't know that when the Father sees you, He sees Jesus. Amen. Amen. Then you allow yourself to be hidden in Him and you won't want nothing to do with it. You've been called out of this filth. You live in a whole different spiritual realm oh, of holiness yes. and righteousness yes, and power. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 I might get through the message. <laughs> Amen. He's already changed the whole thing. If you've got your Bibles, turn to 1 John, the 5th chapter. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the Word. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Let him make it the seat of the little movie. Let him make it the seat. Jesus come to break every chain off of you. Amen. Your, wrong, your wrong beliefs and thoughts of who He is and why He's here. You're already accepted Amen. in the beloved. Hallelujah. You're not going to be. You're not going to get saved. You're not going to get healed. You already are. Yes. Everything when you got conveyed into the kingdom of His beloved Son is in the past tense. Your healing, your prosperity, your joy, your peace, your strength, the years restored to you, it's in the past tense. you got to believe them that the Word is going to do it inside out, not outside in. Amen. 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 First John, the fifth chapter, just verse 7 and 11 and 12. Verse 7, it says, see, when you got born again, what you got filled with. People don't realize what they're filled with. That's why they spend so much time living in their flesh. They don't let what's in them take over. Uh -huh. right. Oh. <laughs> For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are what? One. One. Ephesians 3.19 We are filled with the fullness of God. See, everybody thinks you just got the Holy Ghost. No, you got the whole triune package. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. No, you got the fullness of God. Yes. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, it's in here. If we ever tapped into the power that's in us, your prayer life would change, your belief would change, everything you say and do would change, you would never agree with anything other than that Word of God. That's why we need to t saturate our mind and our heart. Remember something, the soil, when you talk about the four soils, the, four, the soil is your heart. Why does everybody go back into their flesh? One soil, it says, because when the cares of this life come, it had no root. Folks, the only way you get root is when you meditate on this word and it goes from here to here. The soil that the Bible talks about is your heart. The Word is the incorruptible seed. The more it goes in here and you meditate, the more it goes here. Then your soil is so rich and so powerful, has such root. What Karen just said about the root. Well, rooted and grounded in the rock of Christ Jesus, the Word of God. Amen. Remember something, and when you're rooted and grounded in that, anything else tries to get in your airspace between your ears, you laugh at it and you cast it down. Amen. Because Amen. if it's anything that's of the devil... Your spirit should immediately feel a conviction and you go, wow, that didn't come from my Heavenly Father. Amen. Why am I listening to it? Amen. If it isn't triumph and victory, blessings and prosperity and healing and deliverance and love and joy and peace, which is heaven, which is in you, Amen. if it isn't lining up with that, then why do you receive it? Your old person may be believed it. But is there something in you that needs to be taken out and healed because you're still receiving neg negative thoughts about yourself? The Father's never going to speak negatively to you. Amen. He will convict you. He will correct you if you're going in the wrong direction. But His words are always life. Amen. Jesus says, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. life. 
Yes. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Verses 11 and 12, 1 John 5th chapter. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And in this life, is, and in His life is His Son. He who has the Son, what? Has, has life. life. Watch now. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Amen. See, a lot of people, we get mad at people because they don't understand what you're saying. You know why they can't understand you? Because they don't have life in them. Yes, yeah. right. And when I was praying this morning over this, whatever time he got me up, Matthew 28, 27, Jesus called the scribes and the Pharisees hypocrites, whitewashed tombs filled with darkness and not life. See, when you got filled with the Holy Ghost, you got eternal life. That's why I said this, that's why it says this life is temporal. But he called the religious leaders whitewashed tombs. So even when you're dealing with a Christian that hasn't been baptized in the Holy Ghost, they're still in their carnal thinking. Uh -huh. They're trying to understand God carnally, and you can't. That's right, amen. Only the Holy Spirit brings this word alive because it's alive. Yes, amen. See, so when you're dealing with people, that's why I say we can't get mad at people. They're not filled with life. You are. You're guaranteed to go to heaven. It says so. Amen. You're filled with eternal life because God's eternal. He has no beginning and no ending, and neither do you. That's why when people go home to be with the Lord, and oh my God, they passed away. No, they didn't. <laughs> oh man, that's graduation school. Amen. Oh man, you just got your diploma. Come on home. <laughs> your work is finished. Like I said, especially a Christian. It excites me to know where I'm going when this is all over. Amen. I get excited because I've been there half a dozen times. I'm sorry, this world just isn't tempting anymore. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Because I know what awaits and so should you as a Christian. There's a river goes down the middle of heaven and we all swim in it. You know what's cool? I didn't have to go in my mansion and get my swimming trunks on because you're in your eternal bath bathroom suit. I mean, you're in it. You have a glorified body and you just dive in and out. You cruise around heaven. You worship Jesus all day. It's just unbelievable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was cool. I didn't need swimming trunks. Praise God. It's amazing how when you get there, Everybody thinks so different of what heaven's going to be like. When you get there, you don't miss anybody. You don't think about earth. You don't think about what you could have, would have, should have. None of the stuff you think about now is in heaven. That's right. I'm telling you, it's not there. I've been there. I didn't go, Jesus, I really miss earth. I want to go right back. I was kicking and screaming because he sent me back. Oh, I, was, I threw a fit. <laughs> Me and him had a talk that day, and of course he won. But he won, yeah. <laughs> never get to where you push God so far, he says, I am. Because <laughs> once you go there, you've stepped over where you don't belong. I'm just sharing wisdom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just sharing. Oh, God, you're so good. Oh, man. God wants to touch you today. Oh, yes. Jesus. Hmm. Some of you in here are trying to improve yourselves. You need to stop your nonsense. You can't. Who saved you? Jesus. Who washed away your sins? Jesus. Whose image and likeness are you made in? Jesus. Who made you a new creation? Jesus. Okay then. That's how he sees you. Yes, amen. But He did it, not you. That's right. You answered the call and said, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. You need to allow that Word to be alive in here and to change you from the inside out. You're trying to make improvements in your life, which is good, because I dedicate myself to the Lord every morning when I get out of bed. I go in the office, I lift my hands, and I worship Him. I pray in tongues for a while that I read the Scriptures. That's the first hour of the day. Now I'm lined up with His will, not mine. Mm. I can see your morning hours on what they should be. Because when we get up and we seek Him early, like David said, it says, seek Him while He can be found. 
don't wait till noon when you got two flat tires, the windows are stuck, the air conditioner won't work, and then you see Jesus. Hello. I make any friends today. John, the fifth chapter. It's 18 to 30. We're just going to read 20 to 24. It's so important that you learn that your life is to stay hidden in Christ and not come back out. What does it say in John 15? Remain in me and I in you and you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me you can do nothing. Now you can go out and live and exist and make money and do all that apart from Christ. But you'll never have peace. You'll never enjoy what you have. I told you I worked Beverly Hills, Hollywood with the wealthiest people in the world, delivered the most expensive furniture made on the face of the earth. A small house was 15,000 square feet. Okay? This was back in the late 70s through the mid 80s. I never met a more miserable bunch of human beings in my whole life, and I was a heathen. I told one guy, I said, why don't you give me a couple million dollars, see if I could be as miserable as you. He looked at me. He sat back down at his desk. I was putting up this big wall unit, and back then it was 30 grand. He couldn't believe how I could put this thing up on the wall so good and so perfect, so level. Polished glass, aluminum uprights, elm burl cabinets. I took up his whole wall in his corporate office. This guy had money, and then he had more money. But what he didn't have was Jesus. Neither did I at the time. But I saw the dangers of having and possessing and being greedy for gain. God was teaching me as a heathen the dangers of what the world could seduce you with. Uh -huh. They think, but you know what he didn't have? I had my own little truck, had a couple of them, had my own little business. But at the time, I was an alcoholic junkie. But I had more peace than a man that probably was worth a couple hundred million dollars. I left that office and I was scratching my... He didn't say another word to me the rest of the day except thank you when I was done. I said, why don't you give me a couple million dollars? Let me see if I can be as unhappy as you are. <laughs> he just didn't know what to do with himself. That shut down his whole day. This guy's running corporations. He had corporations. Yet he couldn't figure out how I could put up a wall unit. As smart as that man was and what he had, he not had well, one ounce of peace. Not all was well with his soul. I was happier than he was, and I was on my way to hell. He was too, he just didn't know yet. But just think, remember something. That's the emptiness of the world. They don't have life in them, you do. That's why you should be walking around filled with joy and peace and smiling and praising Jesus every day when you get out of bed. We're on our way to eternal yes, glory. Yes. John, the fifth chapter, verses 20 to 24. For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all things that He Himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. The world should be marveling at what God does through you. Remember what Jesus said in John the 14th chapter verse 10? It's the Father who does the works through me. God should be doing such a great work with the church today that the world marvels at the signs, wonders, and miracles. It's amazing how people think they went away. He was healing in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, you have the fullness of God to live through you to do these signs, wonders, and miracles. We don't have to wait to manifest Himself. He's waiting for you to give Him permission to live through you. See, they should see you as such a wonder on the earth. They should see a person. You should be so standing out in this crowd, they can't put your light out. Amen. You should be glowing in His glory. Remember, the glory's not coming. It's already in you. Uh -huh. We did a five-week teaching on that. It's biblical. Amen? Amen? Watch now, for as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even the Son gives life to all to whom He will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has what? Everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but watch now, has passed from what? Death to life. You are all dead people. All of you were on death row before you got saved. 
And that's why. Stop looking at the people like there's something wrong with them. The only thing they don't have is life in them yet. They're whitewashed tombs because all they have is the world in here. It's all they know. It's all they've ever known. You've got to understand something. We live in a country now where a lot of families for two and three generations have been raising children to not even believe there's a God. That's right. Yeah. I mean, i got two nieces who they don't believe there's a God. They don't believe we're one nation under God. They said that wasn't, but that was never real. He didn't establish this country. Yes, he did. But that's what they taught them in school, and that's what their mother taught them. Mm -hmm. God, quiet, God. So stop looking at the kids like it's their fault. They don't have life in them. See, the world's waiting to see a church that they're amazed by what God does with you. People should go, oh. So they know how real God is. Amen. Amen. When people walk in that door, they should feel the presence of God yes. in here, not yours. Yes. Yes. Mm. Mm. Just a messenger. What is that life he gave you? His. Zoe. His life. The life of God. He gave you his own life. His very life. The fullness of God is in you. His very existence. God is spirit. We worship in spirit and truth. John 4, 24. He gave you the fullness of all that He is. So you don't have to do it alone. So you don't have to put all this pressure on yourself to go out and be some kind of supernatural, great witness, evangelist, prophet, whatever. Nonsense. God is great. I told you, there's no such thing as a great person. There was one, his name's Jesus. Amen. And that Zoe life of Jesus Christ, that'll, it's in here. See, so when he says, go out and do greater works than I have done, I'm just a carrier of that. We're going to get to that in a minute. It's so important that you see today what the meaning of life is. The meaning of life is that you died to self so his life can live through you so people marvel at your very existence. Mm -hmm. When all of you got out of bed this morning and said, thank you, Jesus, for another day, all you did that, I'm sure you did, mm -hmm. and you started praising him, yes. all of hell should have trembled that you're still breathing. Amen. When you know who you are. I know he hates me. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> all the times I've been dead, all the times I was almost dead, all the times the devil had me with a foot and a half in the grave, guess what? My God is able. He came and set me free from all that. I am now a new creation, and so are all of you. It's time you started living that way. But you can't do it through your natural man. It's your spiritual man. The fullness of God in here. It's in here. Allow it to live today. Stop being afraid of dying to yourself. you got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Yes, amen. Okay, thank you, Jesus. You know what? God wants you to prosper in all things, even under your health. Uh -huh. Even on. as your soul prospers. That won't manifest inside of you until you believe you already have it. Yes. First yes. John, third chapter. Remember in Proverbs 12, 26, it says, Choose your friends wisely, for the wicked will surely lead you astray. There's a reason I share that with you. About choosing your friends wisely. Amen. There is a hatred of the church like never before. There's a hatred of Israel like never before. That's evidence right there. Jesus is coming. Because the more these people curse Israel, the more God will curse them. But He doesn't actually curse them per se. He allows the word to come deal with them. When it says, I will bless those who bless you, I will curse those who curse you. Why do you think this ministry keeps getting stronger and better and more anointed? Because we keep blessing Israel yes, here with the finances. Amen? amen. amen. Yeah. And we will continue to do that every single week, every month we give to them. Because yes. it's something God says, if you want to be blessed, if you want the blessings of Abraham, don't curse the root of your blessing. Amen. That's why these people in our government that are cursing Israel, they will answer to God, not to us. They will. They have no idea what the can of worms they've opened. But they're so filled with hatred. I'm using that word hatred for a reason. Because be careful who you associate with. If people start talking about, I hate this person and hate that person, hate this person, hate that person, you make sure you don't fellowship with them anymore. 
Come on. We hate sin. Come on. The Bible says hate what is evil. Yes. Yeah. Never, it, says you, it says in James, you can't praise God and curse man who's made in his likeness with the same mouth. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See, our whole prayer life and the way we see mm. humanity must change. We're without excuse, church. We got life in us. We got eternal life in us. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. First John, third chapter, just verses 13 and 15. Do not marvel, my brethren, that the world hates you. That's out of John 15. They hated him first. They're going to surely hate you if you walk with Jesus. But it's not you they hate, but Amen. the life that's in you. Amen. They hate the life that's in you. That's what they hate. Because you got a presence they don't have. you got a peace they can't get by getting high. Amen? Amen. We know that we have...